Hello, hello. This is Eileen Smith, and I want to introduce you to today's co-host. And uh, Deborah, would you yeah. like to just kick things off? Oh, you're so sweet. Thank you, Eileen, and thank you for doing this. It's great to be here. I'm looking so forward to this topic and continuing what you were chatting about on our last, um, I was going to say our last topic, but it's the same topic, our last month. Awesome. Oh, well, by the way, I went and purchased a rocket book. Uh, yeah, I got that right, right? That's what you call it, rocket book? Yeah. And my husband wanted to get one for me, too. So that week, I got two of them. I think it, they're two different types, but I love them. I have one in my office, one in my bedroom. So I am all set. <laughs> all right. Great. I'm so happy to hear that. The impact of AI on repurposing content. Hi, Eileen. Hi, Deb. Hi, Sue. Sue Ann. <laughs> Hi, Sue Ann. Let me start by talking about the benefits. What are the benefits of using AI for repurposing our content? And I have a few on my list, but I would love to hear from you guys as well, because I only have three written down. First would be to save time. And hello, Ross. How you doing? Thanks for joining. And saving time is what we all need, right? We all wish there was more hours in the day. And we have this content. We want to repurpose it. So if AI can help us by maybe uh, chopping up a video or converting our text into a um different format of, depending upon if it's a blog and you start it off with, and then you want to turn it into a newsletter, so forth. Those kinds of things can save us time with the help of AI. The next would be just to increase your productivity. You can get out more content in all these different formats, which we will talk about a little bit more. And also to improve your creativity. Because sometimes you put something into an AI tool and it'll spark, you know, an idea. Or <laughs> it will make you think about things in a different ways. And so those are my three benefits of using AI. But Deborah, did you have any more to add or would you like to share your thoughts on those? I think it covered it really well. I think the only other thing that I've noticed, and this is through working on and on Ann Smarty's um, podcasts and things, sometimes I'll put all this creativity into a post and it's like, I'm going to post kind of an AB type thing. Like I might have her, her podcast on my YouTube channel as well. And I want to put the best on her channel, but I want to put in like a B version maybe on mine and just see it, if mine's gathering more Then I want to grab those keywords and put them on her channel as well. But I want to have a different description and I don't want it to necessarily be competing with the same description. So I need an alternate one, but I don't want it to be a, a bad one. You know what I mean? So it's nice to be able to have AI to have two good versions or two, I should say two great versions. There we go. Great version. <laughs> but it, it's nice to be able to have the alternative and not have it competing, but also have it be a very creative alternative. Did that make sense? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, and that really is the essence of repurposing where, you know, you're getting a different perspective. So I appreciate that, Deb. Thanks so much. So, Lisa, did you want to add anything or just um, comment on my best? Yeah, yes. Mm -hmm. I'm using, I'm using a, a tool that I'm, I'm loving called Flicky. And what I can do is turn blog posts into videos. And I've been doing like shorts, either for YouTube or for Pinterest. And I've been gaining some traction with Pinterest, especially by making um, my pins instead of, you know, just one image into videos. Oh, we got to hear more about that. So no kidding. <laughs> first, how do, how do you spell that? Uh, I believe it's F-L-I-C-K-I or K-I. I can get you a link after. Um, okay. I'll yeah, I'll definitely tweet you guys. And you're putting on Pinterest as well. Yeah, I actually did a blog post about it um, a couple weeks ago. All right, have so, you heard that blog post on Twitter? 
I have, but I will share it with you guys in two minutes. <laughs> well, I was going to say, because I'm not sure if you know how to use the NAS or how to add things to the NAS, but that's all you have to do is go to that. When you go to the tweet, there is the share icon, which is at the bottom right. And the top, when you tap that share icon, the top choice will be to share it into the space. And so, oh, that, okay. I didn't realize you could share it into a space. Cool. Yeah. And if you have any trouble, just retweet it so it's on the top of your profile. Yeah, I'm going to actually I'm just gonna look for the post right now and send it out to you. I'll tweet it and then add it right to the space. Yep. And if you have any but, trouble um, at all, I'll find it on your profile and get it in the. In the yeah. next, but I'll, I'll let you try it first. But I'm just saying, yeah. if you have any, any... <laughs> but I've been I've been using this like for several weeks, and I've noticed a big increase with the Pinterest pins because they're videos, and it doesn't take long at all. I mean, you can change them, you can change the way they look, um, because they pick graphics from your blog post, or you can have others. Um, I just found it, so now I can just tweet it. So you can pick, you can pick and choose. You can even change the voice. You can have all different, you know, voices to choose from. Um, it's just really cool. Okay, I love it. Okay. It. okay, so it now the share button, share post via. It should be the top choice. Look at the top of that list. Uh, copy you're... link. It's not letting me do it to the. Let's see, right at the top. Oh, I see what you're saying. Had yeah. yep. When you're a speaker, you know, host or co-host, you'll see that right at the top option of all the ones. And it's probably the only mm. one colorful and doesn't like <laughs> it. Like, yeah, I'm not seeing it. It won't let it say in delete, edit, post, pin to profile, add, remove, embed. I don't see it there. Then there's a share button. I click on the share. It says copy link, share via direct message or folder and then are you are you on desktop or are you on yeah i'm on oh, desktop okay. so right on my phone i yeah, got on both the phone, on the phone it works i've had trouble i haven't found it on the desktop i didn't know if that was me but it is on the phone okay yeah. i'll get there in two seconds uh, okay. <laughs> all right i'm there now so i hit the share and it says eileen space there we go uh, yep. share it. <laughs> Oh, so it's F L I K I for Yep, no C. Just a, yep. Who doesn't see that? All right. So we will definitely check out your blog post later. And um another cool tool to explore. Yay, I love it. No kidding. Excellent. <laughs> yeah, I've been trying several different AI tools, and um, this is the one I like so far for video. I tried another one that Neil Schaefer had yesterday, I think, on his blog, but you had to pay right away. Like at least I could try this free before I started paying, you know? So. So, so let me understand your Pinterest workflow. Okay. Cause I think mm -hmm. YouTube and all the others are kind of straightforward. So are you using Pinterest on desktop when you yeah. post these videos? Oh, oh, on desktop. Okay. Yep. So, and it, yep. I go right to create pin and then, I add the, the video and then I add the title and I usually schedule them in like for noontime or seven o'clock. I'm kind of, you know, playing with different times of days. Okay. Um, and I used to do just one a day and I'm going up to two a day. Awesome. So, but it's asking you what type of pen you have. That's the part that I wanted to make sure people know because you're going to either have a, just a, I think it may even say image pen. I'm not sure, but I always look for idea pen. Yep. And that's what I believe. Let's see. They're all created. If I go to my create, they're all videos. Um, I don't see on there where it says. It's not until you actually upload it. Yep. I'm looking at the ones I've got like already on. Mm -hmm. It's a little different when you're on um, mobile versus. Uh, yeah. Okay. I haven't used it on mobile in a while. I'm mostly on my desktop when I do this. Okay. All right. That's awesome. But you get a lot more views with the video. I've been finding like one, I just did got a thousand views already where the other static ones, you know, may only have 50, 20, 17, etc. So. Okay. Well, good. Thanks. Great info. And, um, also, I see that people are, uh, 
this. Oh, you weren't hearing anything at the beginning, Lisa. Okay, yes. And Ross says, good day, everyone and others. <laughs> okay. So in, in case you're not understanding what I just did, at the bottom of the space, there is a purple icon on the bottom right. Actually, it's no longer purple for me because I tapped on it to see what the comments were. were. So I think it's called the replies or the comments feature of spaces. So this is where somebody can put in a text uh, post that's, you know, related to the space. Okay, great. So one of the tools that I want to talk about and I'm going to jump right into tools, okay? And I'm so glad that Lisa started us off with her tool. And Sue Ann, you better get ready because I'm going to call on you next. <laughs> Just kidding, Sue Ann. Just let me know if you're if you're ready. Um, is um, vid video? It's V I D Y O slash A I. And the reason why. I think it's important for us to talk about this one today is because they just updated. In fact, uh, about three hours ago, they just did a launch of their 2.0 version of video on YouTube. And they had a Q&A to go through. I'll just give you an idea. First off, video is one of those where you put in your long form video and it chops it up into short form videos that you can, you know, share on shorts and TikTok and, and reels and all that, but it adds, adds captions and you get to choose the captions and you don't have to uh, keep it as vertical or make it vertical. You can also keep it as horizontal and they have templates in there and all that. So the new interface that just released is I can say right away, it's much more intuitive. I already had a look at it. This is the tool that I use most often for adding captions to some kind of a, a short video that I've created. Um, they have an AI content assistant. It, you know, you ask Vidi to create ideas for new content based on existing content, SEO blogs, show notes, tweets, and LinkedIn posts. Enhanced video edits and playback, which is also cool. And then what's really awesome is now they have mobile support. So you can use your phone if you want to take advantage of vi video. Now, I have a whole list of short form, I'm sorry, long form to short form content tools. The reason I'm mentioning this one is because they do have the free version that you can always use for free and you don't have a watermark on it. So there's so many tools and I know it's like so hard to choose which one you're going to use. Like I really appreciate the fact that Lisa introduced us to Flicky. So we'll check that one out. But this one is one that's been on my radar because like I said, you can use it for free and there's no watermark. Of course, you're limited to how long your videos can be and all that good stuff. But I just like having the access to the free version and I've created my video maybe on my phone or um, I use one of the apps on my phone to create the video, but I want their captions because they let me control the fonts, the colors, the position and all that stuff very easily. Now, I haven't played with the mobile version because like I said, this just launched today, but I definitely wanted to talk about that. And before I go any further, I want to say hello to my friend, Neil. Hi, Neil. How are you? I'm going to send you an invite in case you want to chime in as well. But if not, we're, we're happy to have you joining us here. And so, Sue Ann, would you like to say a few words? Hello, darling. Um, yes, sure. Because in listening to everybody so far, I've come to a couple conclusions that I think make good sense for everybody. And one of the things that I'd say um, is an impact of AI is that you do have the ability 
from what Deborah was talking about and Lisa was talking about and what you're talking about to incorporate a lot of personalization and customization into various outputs. So along with that increased productivity, you're actually able to approach each platform uniquely, like Lisa's doing in her things with Pinterest and you're doing with different video and audio clips. Another thing that I'm hearing or that I'm gathering, and and I also got this advice um, outside uh, from a creator, and I think it's something we all should think about too, is that think about how quick these tools are changing and adapting and evolving. And when you think about that from a creator perspective, there might be a couple lessons to me. One of them is definitely try out free versions before you're purchasing. Also, somebody suggested, and I've been doing this with a couple of the tools that I'm trying, I'm usually like buy it yearly and be done with it, right? That's usually my MO when it comes to my software and tools um, or get a lifetime, whatever, get the deal and be done. I don't like doing the payments. But in the case of AI, I'm starting to change my perspective a little because of how fast things are evolving and how, as a user, we have to decide like what is comfortable for us and also what fits our needs as far as our business, our platforms, our audience, those, those customization features that I was talking about earlier. And so I think this is another aspect, another plus to AI for content repurposing that is beyond what we could do previously without this extra tool. Um, so the other thing is I don't, I think that we all are starting to realize now that it's not so much a replacement, although it will replace jobs, um, but it's a matter of adapting like we do to any changes in, you know, I mean, electricity was a huge change. <laughs> this is something I heard somebody compare it to this being as big as that adva advancement in, in, society and in social, in our world, in our culture. And so we need to take that into consideration and understand that it's all kind of right now still to be answered. Like we don't have the, the end result yet. We don't have the answer. And so that's another reason I think it behooves us to experiment and test and try these things. And, you know, you do want to get a set toolkit, but now more than ever, you're invited to not have a set toolkit, to test and try and, and really advance your business, your skill set, um, and your customer experience that you're able to provide and to provide them as a, a service provider. So there's just a whole rainbow of um, um, ripples that I see if we kind of open our mind and, and take this in, in in a big way. So true. You know what, Suzanne, when you mentioned about the, the one year versus the monthly, and, and I'm with you on that. I prefer, you know, getting the, the two months discount on a lot of these when you pay for a year. But I, I um, bought one. I think I, I won't even say the name because there's no point because they've gone out of business. But that's the other thing, too, is you go pay this big bulk money and then the company isn't in business anymore because they haven't been able to um, sustain their business. And I feel bad for them. But I also feel bad for myself because I did invest basically 10 months worth of payments into them and you don't get that back. It's, it's just gone. And so I've been kind of rethinking that to say, is this company going to be in business in another year? So and maybe it's changing <laughs> so fast, like, like you mentioned some features. Um, I know Miss Eileen loves the zealous features where we can get like the audiograms and like Opus and some of the tools, Flicka, these tools that can transform things into video, but like, like cast magic that I was using that started out just being like for audio moved into audio and then video and now they're doing audiograms and shorts and they allow you to customize the short to come out in you know vertical horizontal you know tiktok stuff like you can actually stylize and customize for the platform so they're all evolving so quickly you know who's to say who who becomes the winner in the end or the one that you hit it off with because exactly let's face it we all it, you know interface differently like and i think that that's the other thing miss eileen you mentioned how creativity is a result of this 
And that's the other thing about having the better pr productivity and the time saving that gives you more time because you don't have to worry about the tech as much that's being covered, gives you time for yay, more creativity. Awesome. Awesome. Oh, I love, love, love everything you said, Sue Ann. But I do want you to go back just a little bit about cast magic because I know you love that tool. And I, I would just, if you could just talk a little bit about what you find about it that um, may be different from some of the other tools, or is it just that you like the interface? Give, well, give me... I'll tell you what, I'll tell you exactly what stands out for me, but um, um, it's, it's because I'm a little anti-AI in some regards as a, a writer and artist, okay? Um, and also because as a journalist, from a journalist background, you have to consider fact people, you know, not just, you know, uh, made up news and, and information, but factual information. And that's one of the things where AI goes off the rails. We really have to be careful. Even now, even as it's advancing, every week you're hearing, you know, the, the problems with some of it, not getting it right. Um, like having um, people of color part of the Nazi photograph was, I think, one of the latest ones that is really messed up. Um, um, but what I'm saying is that you want some some relevance and honest honesty in into it, and and you know, no, have your facts and your resources checked, all of those kind of things. So what I like about Cast Magic is that it's my input. That's my favorite. That's the number one thing to me. So I put my videos in there. I put my podcasts in there. And then that's the content that's repurposed. And that content has already been vetted because I already did the work putting together the production that I'm repurposing from. So when you're not just calling out to AI to gather the information randomly, when you're actually inputting your own um, information, which also gives you that bit more of tone and branding and style that reflects you and your business and, you know, is how you speak to your customers. All those nuances, it helps you to uh, can keep inside of the AI. And then it also lets you go outside of the AI because it does have the ability beyond just giving you all the things that you normally expect, like transcriptions and timestamps and quotes from your work and, you know, an outline of the best part, or you can ask, you can ask it to rewrite an intro in 30 seconds that sums up the most important things of the show that you can now make another promotion piece. Now you can clip into your audiograms, your shorts. It does, it's, it, it just does all these things, but it's based off of your original, unique, vetted, personal content. To me, that's the standout feature. And I kind of like these guys because they allow you and their community to give a lot of feedback and they are constantly taking that feedback and making it happen. They're actually making it happen like weekly. They bring you in, they talk to you, they ask questions, they get, you know, they have a really good two-way communication, which as we know, as marketers is a huge thing in creating a community around anything is that Marketing now is a two-way street, as I always talk about, and it's a conversation with your customers. And that's something I think these guys are doing right. Unfortunately for me, they're catching on so big that my tiny uh, attempt at being an affiliate for them probably isn't going to score when I compete in the same space with all the big names that are now picking them up. But that just goes to show how awesome they are. That's a, that's a good point. I love Cast Magic. It's becoming my my favorite tool, and I didn't know if it would. I got it, I think, through AppSumo or something when and their sign up. But now it it has that magic right or whatever. I use that after I've imported my um, my podcast and it transcribes. So I use it for the transcription. But then when you pop over all of the things that comes up with like real ideas, it comes up with questions. So if you wanted to do a Twitter chat or something based on your podcast, it already has the discussion questions for you. It's got. It has more things in there than I even thought It'll of doing. It'll create a lead magnet from what you present. 
It exactly. will put, if you cre- present a how-to, you can turn it into a course through Cast Magic. I mean, yep. it is sort yep. of magical, guys. Yep. And it's all, like you oh, said, can Sam, I put it's all your own stuff. Can I put one of my videos in about it? In, just in <laughs> case? <laughs> I was going to say that. And also, I just want to remind everybody that when you look down at the bottom row on your phone, uh, maybe you could be on your desktop. You might see this as well. There is a heart emoji there. So you can be throwing up emojis and hand claps and all this good stuff for all this wonderful stuff that Sue Ann was saying. And she was basically giving us the whole rundown. And I love how she just laid it out for us. And I I hope that it makes you guys think when we are looking at this vast array of tools that are out here, like what is it that this tool that you're being presented with or you're trying you know someone's trying to sell you on it or you see it on social media what is it about this tool that I love like even Lisa was talking about how you know she's getting an increase on YouTube and on Pinterest and she's you know seeing something from that and so I want you to think about all that stuff. I see Sue Ann had to leave and come back, so I'll send her the invite again. You and, caught me. I was going to grab it. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, you make yourself a, a checklist, even if it's just a mental checklist. Like, because otherwise we could go down a rabbit hole of really wasting time reviewing all these tools. Because. Oh. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> I, didn't mean I don't to interrupt. <laughs> I don't, in fact, not only do I not use Trello, I can honestly say that I've tried Trello and I think it's a wonderful tool. Don't get me wrong. I just don't work that way. I like to to have like all my notes for today are printed on paper. I'm not using any, you know, Google Docs. (laughs) Right, right. Hey, everyone's different. I write things and I I have one side note over here. That's my handwriting. You know, I, and then going into Trello and trying to find what board is where, and that to me is confusing. So, and it's okay though. I know that people that love Trello just love it. It helps them stay organized. I don't like that organization. I like to be a hot mess. I got paper. (laughs) You're a beautiful hot mess, Miss Eileen. You really are. You're beautiful. I got papers all over my desk, but I know that my bills for the dentist are over there in that pile. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. But you know, hey, what works for you? That's right. And that's why I said make, you know, a mental note or use Trello, how, whatever, of the thing that you really want AI to do to help you with your repurposing. And so that's one of the things I want you to take away from today. And with that, that's a great segue over into the next tool that I want to talk about. And it, you know, it is Zealous. Zealous. I absolutely love it. And it does a lot of the things that Sue Ann just talked about with Cast <clears throat> Cast Magic. And and Miss Helene, I think you already you put a link in there. I think I saw it in the nest. You already have Zealous in there, right? Yes, I did okay. a little short video there. And it basically shows you what some of the things, you know, and it's those making clips and making transcripts using AI and highlights using AI and recaps and, you know, audiograms and audio clipping. But one thing that Zealous does that nobody else does, it captures my Twitter spaces. Yay, yay, yay. That's my favorite. (laughs) It records them. I don't have to press an extra button if I don't want to. Um, And I... I think maybe wait, depending upon how long your space is, but let's say 15 minutes, maybe uh, it may be less time than that. After the space is over, it's ready. It's ready to go. And because I spoke, won't it show up on mine automatically too? 
Yep. It should. If, yep. if you have it set up for speakers, it will. But it doesn't automatically I think show when up I for speak, co-host. I don't know. Like, when I've spoken before, like, it just showed up on my Zealous. And I'm like, cool, because I can repurpose content that's your content, but that I'm, you know, participating. And so I even get that content, which is super cool. I found it shows up for host and speaker, but not necessarily co-host, which is really strange, but has a cool tool where you can just type in the, the URL and it'll pull it. So if it's not there, it's easy to grab. That's weird, huh? Co-host is nothing, huh? I don't know yeah. if my settings are off, but it just doesn't automatically do it for co-host, but it will automatically do it for host and speaker. You, you know, honestly, I don't know because I always put the link in before mm -hmm. the event even happens. So the times that I've been a co-host, I've had the link ahead of time. So yeah, see, I, I haven't tried that. And I never <laughs> put the link in ahead and I always show up. Isn't that weird? Yeah. <laughs> and so like the other day, uh, Deborah invited me, uh, Deborah and Gail um, from Grow Map invited me to talk about TubeBuddy and we we're talking about video and all that good stuff. And I was a speaker and I had forgot like, oh gosh, I'd never went and grabbed that link. And I was like, darn, because Deborah didn't send me the link or whatever, what, whatever it was. I was like, I'll scroll down our timeline. And then I opened Zealous. I had the link now, right? I opened Zealous and it's already there. But I was a speaker. I was <laughs> not a co -host. But the point I'm making here is it's a standout feature. N there used to be another tool that did the same thing. In fact, this other tool, I, I don't even, they changed their name when they uh, pivoted. So I can't even remember what the old Is name it was. Flo Is it Flojin? No, not Flojin. It was another tool that would also automatically huh. post it on YouTube for you. Edgar oh. or Headliner or had something? No, 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 no. Like I said, <laughs> Sorry, they, no. Are they are gone now. But what they did was, they would have all the speakers' profile picture, and it had their branding on it. I didn't like that, and I had kind of stopped using them right before they went away because I wanted them to upload it to YouTube as unlisted. That way, I could go in there, change the art, you know, change the image, do anything else I wanted to do with the description, add tags, and all that good stuff, but they didn't have that in their workflow. And maybe that's why they pivoted. And I, I actually had to give this tool access to my YouTube channel in order for them to do this, right? So they were posting on my behalf, but I don't really, I don't need that. I, I don't even think I want, I didn't like it. <laughs> it. I mean, it did the job. It did the job. It was, there was no problem with the actual audio and all that stuff was there. But I can see why they went away because I know that a lot of people are very sensitive about, you know, giving their con uh, access to their YouTube channel and not being able to go in there ahead of time and make those changes. Like, you, you know, there it has their branding on the thumbnail, you know, because it was generated by them. But it was like that's not nice. I don't want your branding on my thumbnail. <laughs> but it, I was getting the tool for free. So, but anyway, Zealous, as far as I know, and if anybody knows differently, holler at your girl, right? <laughs> and let me know that there's another tool that I could use, even though I wouldn't leave Zealous anyway, because I just love, love it. I love how it works and all that. But if there is another tool out there that captures these Twitter spaces, I want to know about it because you know me, I like to test all the things if I can, especially if they have a free option. <laughs> now, do you have any, I don't want to go off in another direction. Maybe this is a, another space, but do you have a comparison as far as um, Flojin versus Zealous? And I'm asking for personal reasons because for some reason I'm subscribed to both. So I'm wondering if I should just um, drop Flojin or no offense to them personally, but... <laughs> No, I do not because Flogen changed and I mm -hmm. never bothered to find out what all their changes were. Okay. So, I'm just, I don't use them as much as Zealous. So yeah, it, it, I know one thing, it doesn't automatically import your spaces. I do know that. Okay. It did start to automatically import mine 
And then sometimes it will and sometimes it won't. And I think it's a space thing. You know, it's like it'll keep imported up to a certain point, whatever my, my program is or my subscription. Maybe. Um, you know, so that was cool. But how many copies do I need? Zealous already does that, you know. So I'm, but I don't think it has enough features that it outperforms Zealous. Yeah. Again, no offense to them personally, but hey, you know, <laughs> Zealous yeah. is just better. And they're, yeah, they're, they're, they're starting to pivot as well with the pricing and all that. And so um, Zealous is still, I think, affordable for people, especially if there are people that want to take these spaces and repurpose them on YouTube. And believe it or not, I was surprised that uh, the spaces that I uploaded on YouTube, I thought that they would do well at all, but they did okay. They did okay. I mean, they got just as many views as some of my other videos, my long form content. And so it just goes to show that a lot of people will look at that title. And I always make sure that I put audio in the title. So there's no clicking by mistake, thinking it's a video, right? And is if that title is um, sending a message that this is a topic that you want to learn about, like hopefully this title that I have here for today, when I put this on YouTube, hopefully it'll have the same kind of impact where people will say, oh, I do want to know about I. I I actually did a video with Lisa and I from a spaces and I changed it into a video by just doing some slides and some information overlays. And it's a really kind of, for me, my tiny channel, a pretty successful video. And I think Lisa then repurposed it into a blog post. And then of course I always do a blog post of my videos. So it turned from a spaces to a video to Lisa's post to my post. So um, that space is, is actually about the future of blogging. Check it out on video on my YouTube. And Lisa is the greatest because she always draws people. She's so smart. Hey, wow. Uh, you, you should write a, a blog post about what you just said. Like, <laughs> and show the, the path. Hey, was I on that? I don't it, think you were. Um, make it that day. Darn it. <laughs> yeah, I think you had something at your real work that, at that time, unfortunately. Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, you guys do these spaces that, you know, 11 o'clock on a Tuesday. No. Well, we actually set it for 3 o'clock hoping you would make it, but that particular day you had something crazy. Like, it was an odd, like, we did try to think of you, honestly, oh. but you had something weird, like, like that particular day just didn't make it. Can you, can you believe those people at my day job? Want Next me? time, Roz will have to give us our cards ahead of time so we know. <laughs> She can do that, yes. But yeah, those people at my day job actually want me to come to a meeting at three o'clock in the afternoon. Like, what is wrong with that? <laughs> just kidding, just kidding, just kidding. But anywho, yeah. And so I wanted to definitely talk about Zealous and what I think is the unique feature that compels me to always promote them, to always stick by them and make great use of it, but it does do a lot of the same things that um, Cast Magic does and some of the other tools, but like I said, I haven't had time to explore all of them and I don't think we should. I don't think we should just, you know, spend hours going through all these different tools. It's just like, I think when you find the one that works for you, that's the one you should explore because that's the other side of the coin. We buy this stuff, right? We buy this stuff and then we never fully use it. And really, it could probably be an answer that eliminates several problems. Right now, actually, honestly, I'm trying to think about how to make Cast Magic part of my content workflow so that it actually has an automated time-saving, productivity, impactful place in the content workflow. And so when I'm thinking about content production and AI, how can my AI actually enhance my 
content workflow and fit in there seamlessly to make it, you know, a seamless, smooth production for me. Because again, the more I can free up, you know, things that are the, the, the over and over things, the more I can be creative and make a better piece of content. I have it in my workflow, but then again, I produce a lot of podcasts, my own and then for other people. And I use it for the lyrics in the um, the actual files. I use Cast Magic to um, create those the transcription for that one. I don't use it for the final transcription. I actually use Descript for that um, because, well, I won't go all into it. That's a more detailed, geeky explanation. Nothing against Cast Magic, but it is actually a part of my workflow probably twice a day. And that's how I accidentally came upon all the the magic right and everything else. So it's it's going to become more a part of my workflow. But literally, it's it's a step in the process for the yeah, podcast. Yeah, they they actually now integrate with Zapier, so yep. you could liter- and they also integrate with RSS feeds. That's the other part I like. So when I do a podcast, it automatically pulls that RSS into the software. It automatically spits out the the um, transcript, the timestamps. It gives me alternate uh, alternatives to pick out for a title. If I want to, I can remix that or regenerate that. I can then even take it a little bit uh, further where um, it gives me something beyond, you know, the initial um, prompt. You can, you can actually change update dump. Like if you, like if you don't use an area that it it generates, you can get rid of that. Um, That's part of all the stuff that I call the customization, the personalization, and the integrated workflow. But imagine Deborah having to touch it less and it happened. Um, that, so that, that is pretty then, cool. Then the next part is it with the Zapier, it takes it from that LinkedIn post that you got out of that podcast, right? And it puts it up into your LinkedIn newsletter. All you have to do is meet it there, edit it, and send it. Now, you're saying that it actually touches the tag editor, the ID3, as far as for the files? I don't know if I know how that part works. because that's I know. <laughs> But, what, but if the integration, so you RSS it in, you get your inputs, and then you send those inputs. You send one to your LinkedIn newsletter. You send one to your WordPress oh, gotcha. site to edit as a blog post. You send one into your email um, ESP provider, and then it's there to edit and send out. So that the the process of getting it from here to here and, you know, almost done has like three steps of you touching it is over. That's amazing. Very amazing. And Miss Eileen, I I won't overly geek. I'll stay away from the ID3. I'll save that for another space. Uh, Oh, (laughs) yeah. (laughs) Okay, Sue Ann, I do need you to do a favor. You sh- you shared your video as a reply to the space. But what I would love if you could do, if you've ever tweeted that video, I want you to share that video into the space so that it can appear up at the top in the nest. This is also a teaching moment because I don't know. I, not- I was thinking that. <laughs> I'm sure you know how to and- do that. I don't know how to do that because that's what I thought I was doing. Uh, do you? I'm going to explain it to you. Hi, Brent. How are you? Thank you so much for joining. So if you have tweeted that video, which I'm pretty sure you have done. Of course. Okay. So then you're going to go to, are you on your phone? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So you're going to go to that tweet. And at the bottom, you're going to see that share option on the far right at the bottom. Are you with me? Let me know. (laughs) And from there. I'm there, but I had my mic off. Sorry. Okay. That's all right. And so when you share, when you tap on that share, the very first thing at the top of the share list is this space. Oh, yes, it is. Yes, it works. <laughs> I tapped on it. It says it was shared. Oh, my goodness. It's there. It's there. And that's what I wanted to see because I think this cast magic is a very interesting tool that uh, a lot of people will enjoy using. And I know. Thank you. 
You're welcome. Uh, you're welcome. Okay. And is it possible to find the article that you're talking about? One of the versions, you know, the one that you guys added the video and made blog. And I was looking on Lisa's. Oh, um, yeah. I, I have um, tweets of her and my article. I could probably do that same trick. Yes, if yep. you could. I was I was looking for it, but I'm sure you'll find it faster than, than I will. Okay, great. So I have one more tool that I want to share from my content uh, repurposing tool stack. And actually, this tool can be used not just for content repurposing, but also for content generation. And that is Magi. And it's M-A-G-A-I. It's like magic AI. And Ma Magi is so cool because it has all these uh, LLMs, uh, language, what is, did I say that right? It's language models. <laughs> and so ChatGPT3 and ChatGPT4, Claude Instant, Claude 2.1, it's got Meta's Llama, it's got Gemini Pro, it's got, uh, something that I never use, which is PPX online and and it also has um, chat GPT for vision. And there and my friend Dustin Stout is the developer of this tool and he's adding things all the time. Plus there's also image um, AI image tools inside of it, which would be your uh, Dolly, Leonardo, and uh, Stable Diffusion. And I find that this is one where you can take a summary or take the transcript from another um, piece of content and add it in there and for some reason Gemini seems to be giving a lot of good results and I'm not the only one who said that. Oh, Deborah, you're here twice. Hi. <laughs> uh, and um, it does a really good job of that repurposing, creating, like Sue Ann said earlier, your lead magnets, you know, outlines and things like that. And so I just, I wanted to mention this tool because it has so many language models built into it that if you haven't explored it yet, it's definitely worth checking out. Has anyone heard of it or another tool that's like it that brings in all these um, language models in one place? I've heard of it, but I think I heard of it from you, but I haven't used it. <laughs> okay. All right. What about you, Sue Ann? Or Lisa? I think I think it doesn't Magi bring in a few tools like some of the um um like you said like maybe Dally three that is an illustrator or image prov um yep. and then also it has Chat GPT um components and then I think um I think Chat GPT actually I guess is the motor sort of to many of the tools that operate in you know applications from there? Uh no, actually they're different models because Gemini is what used to be Bard. Bard, okay. From Google. And then there's the pilot, the co-pilot that's the Microsoft uh, answer to that. And it allows you to use Dali 3 within it for free, which is weird to me that it it's a it's like a Gemini. Well, Gemini now has a video component too. Yes. And with I that, is it sorrow? And then what about when you were speaking of languages, what about the new like dubbing languages to your videos? So some people are, are suggesting that you could produce your channel as a separate channel in an, another language to create a new community and, and grow your you know, channel and so forth in another country. Like 
uh, like say Spanish or something like that. Have you have you seen a little of that? This is you know more AI. Yes, I have seen it, and I have not um, experimented with it yet. But uh, I will say that one of the tools that you mentioned, the pi the Copilot from Microsoft, that is not part of Magi. So I just wanted to make sure that everybody was clear about that. But the Gemini is there as well as Gemini Pro Vision. I have not played with those yet. And like I said, I've used the Dolly and I've used the Leonardo. Actually, I like Leonardo a lot better than I do Dolly. But I like Leonardo and also Playground is another one for that does similar to Leonardo. And I love it. I've been using the free version. It lets me do like... 500 visuals a day on the free version. Yeah. Some noise. It might be you, Lisa. I'm not sure. Or is that you, Sue? <laughs> Lisa, did you want to say something? I did, yes. So when you asked about the language, did you mean the language for content or just video? You were no. saying a different language. I, I, um, I'm using the wrong terminology. So hang on. When I say an LLM, that's a large language model. That's what chat GPT is. It's a large language model. Okay. okay. And so when we have inside of Magi, you have access to the same large language models like the one that's in chat GPT. Yeah, and that's what I was trying to say. There's something under the hood that runs a lot of them, right? Right. Like whether it's Magi or whether it's Cast Magic or whether it's like a lot of them are predicated on that bigger, you're calling it an LLM, large lar learning language model. Lar lar yeah. Lar yeah. So yep. that's there's something at the bottom of most of the tools is what I'm gathering. The, the biggies are run right. a million of the other ones. That's another reason why those experimental month to month uh, tastes of things might make sense. Yes, exactly. Exactly. And um, I will say when it comes to images, now we're not really talking about repurposing here. We're talking about generating images. Um, but what I use it for mainly would be for images for, um, my thumbnails for my YouTube thumbnails, and then using a tool like TubeBuddy, which here we this is how I'm bringing the AI back into it, right? Using a tool like TubeBuddy, I can use their A B testing tool, which uses a lot of AI, and also they will scan your thumbnail, let you know if you know it should do well on your channel, and things like that. And so I love, love, love the some of the AI that's built into TubeBuddy that, you know, can help you optimize your YouTube videos. But honestly, if I don't generate an image inside of Magi, I just use Canva. I just use Canva because Canva... You can help love Canva. And they were one of the first really pu pushing AI and, and bringing AI features in. And they're sort of on top of it still. Um, Canva does a lot of stuff. I mean, you can, Lisa taught me, you can do reels on there or, you know, shorts or things like that, even through Canva. Absolutely. And, and Lisa, I might've got you confused because I did start talking about language, like using different languages, because I saw this video where they, these guys were like repurposing their current video library, the stuff they've already created, starting another channel and then changing the language, like dubbing their their mouth into Spanish speaking. Um, and then they could become, you know, gain a Spanish speaking, a whole new audience, a whole new reach, teaching the same information, like in your case, SEO and blogging and social and what have you. Absolutely. And Deborah, you just pinned something into the nest. Let's talk about that. <laughs> I just, I have to give Ann Smarty credit for this one. And she's um, heard all of her episodes that she recorded this week will come out next week. So her YouTube, um, I don't know if she has the raw version posted, but anyway, the, uh, she'll be talking about that a little bit more. She 
kind of turned me on to the heartheweb.com and it's great. It's conversational. Well, you can have as many people as you want on that, but I tried it for free just a couple of days ago. You can take your blog post. So it's it's probably better if you take one of your really long ones that has already done really well. So you know people love the content, plug it into Hear the Web and it'll come up with a conversational podcast with two people talking back and forth. I mean, you could do it with one person too, but it's more exciting if you have more than one. And they'll they'll create a conversational podcast based on your blog post. And it's not like they're just reading it. it it'll be just like you're listening to a morning talk show or something. It is, oh, I love it. It has become my new, my next podcast is going to be based on that. I mean, I'm going to let people know these are AI people. These are not human <laughs> beings. They're actually, I'm going to be transparent, well, you know, but it is it is great. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, especially when you can try it for free. We've mentioned that yep. earlier. Yep. So, yeah. you know, it, yep. It only gives you one credit, but hey, I, to me, uh-huh. one credit was enough to be able to hear. It was like, I wrote that? I I didn't know I wrote that. It was like a whole new, you know, <laughs> look at what, what you wrote. Right, right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are coming to the close of today's space. And so I just want to uh, do a little bit of probably what I should have done at the beginning and just talk about the different kinds of content that we want to think about repurposing. And uh, we're talking about, let's start with the written content, because I know Myself, Lisa, Deborah, Roz, we all started, Sue Ann, I'm sorry, we all started with blogging. Like we weren't even, well, I was doing video because I started a video. I started on YouTube like the week after I started my blog, but that's another story. (laughs) So what we started with the written content, the blog was always the main focus. So we have all these articles talk about archives, right? And that we can repurpose, we can update and tweak, but we can also use these tools that we've been talking about today to reformat, to transform those blog posts. Same thing with audio. You know, we've got podcasts that we started ages ago, right? But we can now transform them with the use of some of these tools. And last but not least is video. We can take that video and turn it out as a blog post or turn it out as an audio podcast. But what's really become popular today is taking that long form content and chopping it up and making all kinds of short form videos. And I just encourage you to experiment with them. You may be like I was in the beginning and I was like, shorts, that is so silly. I don't want, I don't like short videos. I want to watch an hour long video. I gave in y'all. I gave in. (laughs) And I realized that there also is a benefit. There is a time and a place when you don't mind watching shorts. You know, I started my account on TikTok and I could find myself, I don't get lost over there like some people do, but I could find myself spending maybe 15 minutes just scrolling through TikTok. And I like the fact that I could just, with in a glance, without even watching, I was like, nope, I don't want that person. Nope, I don't want that person. <laughs> nope, I don't. Oh, this looks interesting. <laughs> So it's a it's just a different form of content and a different audience that you may be reaching, or you may be reaching your same audience, that person that just doesn't have time to listen to your long form. Because every time they go to your video, your YouTube channel, they see, oh, there's an hour video. Oh gosh, that's too long. Oh, there's a 20-minute video. Oh, that's too long. And Neil, I'm gonna shut up now because I want to hear from you. Hey, Neil. You got to unmute. <laughs> oh, Neil, I'll wait. Whenever you unmute, I will shut up. <laughs> but you do have the microphone now, so go ahead and speak. Okay, so I those are the three content forms that we should look at repurposing. And also, like when I 
like I said earlier, when you're evaluating these tools, maybe you want to think about what's the most important piece of content or format of content that I want to transform right now. You know, you may just want to spend a month going through all your blog posts. And so you're looking for a tool that's going to take that text and either, you know, add a voice to it or somehow reformat that, even if you want to just make your lead magnets from this. Can AI help you to make this easier, more efficient, and, you know, help you bring out your creativity and uh, (laughs) with the help of AI. And I think that Neil had little um, audio issues, but I definitely want to go through everyone and give everybody their last thoughts. And I will start with you, Lisa. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. I think the most important thing is to have a tool that you're comfortable with that you can use easily. To me, that's the biggest thing. Um, I've been using the right blogger. They got 68 different tools and it's like from writing paragraphs to SEO, to blogging, um, to social media, where you can create all different kinds of posts on different uh, social media channels. And if you, Today, I needed a tool for reviews for my real estate client. They wanted to get quick reviews online, so they wanted to you know, have a format for that. And they didn't have it in their 68 tools, so I emailed it to Ryan Robinson and Andy. And within 10 minutes, they responded back, asked what I needed. And in a half hour, they added it to their 68 tools, so now they got 69. <laughs> but it's just a fabulous program that I was able to try out for free. And then I ended up purchasing, it's like $29 a month. But the only thing they don't have is the image in the, the video, which is why I was looking at other tools. Awesome. Awesome. Now, let's make sure we have the spelling because, you know, there's more than one right way to spell right. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> spell this R-I-G-H-T. So it's right. the, but it's the rightblogger.com? I think it's rightblogger.com. Yep. W-R-I. You should put a link in, Lisa, because it, it is – odd one to find if I, I remember looking for it and it took a sec uh yep. but i tested out a bunch of his free tools just last night my girl i wanted to tell you and it was really cool yeah they're just they're fabulous the two guys that that run it are just unbelievable they're very receptive if you you know have ideas or you need something and, and they have a blogger centric which is great if you're a writer or blogger because that twist makes it i think special too right yeah, that's what Ryan Robinson does. He has his own blog, and he offers some of the tools there for free as well. So, yeah, they're really uh, a fabulous crew there. But for me, it was ease of use because I've tried a lot of different tools. I even tried the chat GBT when it first came out, and I found it clunky. I found it hard. But when I went to the right blogger tool, it was like, wow, this is just amazing. So you need yeah. something that's I think that you can work with that's easy for you. That's really important because you don't want to spend the time learning all these tools. It is. I so appreciate all of your input today. Lisa, you're amazing. And so when, let's hear from you. What What are some of the last things you'd like to say? Um, just, I'm so grateful to be here today. I have I've been under the weather and I'm just like happy to be alive today, guys. I'm so, so I'm glad I caught up with all of you. Um, um, I think that there's a lot of opportunity, um, out there. I think part of the ability to really optimize the use of your AI for repurposing or just in general even for ideation, which is, you know, way before repurposing sometimes is about learning that what they were calling prompt engineering. Now they don't want to call it that, but whatever. It's about, like Lisa said, it's about really tuning the tool to work for your specific needs. And like, and, and I, I think I'm going to share a post from the right blogger that I was just looking at because he really talks about how to get down the prompts that get you the real results that you're looking for. Cause I think that's a huge key to it. 
Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for your contributions today as well, Sue Ann and Deborah. Uh, two things kind of related but come to mind, and that is to be open minded. When I was promoting Ann Smarties, when she did AI um, a few weeks back, and I was promoting that, I had I had haters out there that were saying, I'm going to block Social Web Cafe. I'm going to, you know, all this stuff because I can't stand AI. I was like, why are you blocking me? I'm not the one that created it. But I mean, there are people out there that that hate AI, and I get that they can have their opinion. But you know, I tried to. I'm not going to go all into you know the philosophical and the psychological, but it's like, look, AI is here, whether we like it or we don't like it, it's out there, and, and we can't singularly stop it. So why not be open minded enough to understand it and see where it fits or doesn't fit into each of our personal lives, and try to work with it. It doesn't mean that we have to use everything that AI spits out for us personally. It's a personal choice. But the other thing is to work as a group and help each other, like what we're doing, exactly what we're doing today, as far as sharing ideas and learning from each other. Oh my gosh, what a great way to end this space. I love, love, love what you just said. We have to look <laughs> at you. these we, we have to collaborate with one another. And I always loved collaborating with all of you ladies and everybody who was in the space today, even if the mic wasn't working. <laughs> and it, this is how we grow. This is how we keep up with what's going on. There is so much that's always like chomping at us, chomping away at us, trying to, you know, like, pull us in all these different directions, but these things can help us focus, help us stay grounded. And, you know, just having this community, you know, you just feel like you're getting all these virtual hugs and I want to give everyone one right now. Mm -hmm. Love you. Love you all to pieces. And we will be back on the first Saturday of, oh my gosh, bro. <gasps> at, oh. at three <laughs> with another edition of The Social Cafe. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day.